Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Hub Fuel. We're going to take it back to basics and we're talking about how to get your HubSpot portal off the ground and how to set up domains within HubSpot. Now, up until now, um, you're probably setting up all the tools in HubSpot, but you probably have a need to really make it your own, right? So the assets that you're publishing are going onto a branded URL that really represent your organization, your business, and make basically an extension of your existing website if you have one. And HubSpot gives you the ability to do that. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So as you can see here, I'm just in HubSpot. It doesn't matter whereabouts you land in HubSpot, depending on your homepage. Where we just need to navigate to is at the top, you have the settings icon. From there, if we scroll down the left-hand side, scroll all the way down to where you have tool-based settings, and then under website, you have domains and URLs. If you go into this, Essentially what you can actually do is you will see a page that looks similar to this. So you can see here, we just basically got um, our business unit. Um, if you use business units, we're generally just a page for your domains and you will have a big option to connect a domain. Now, the important thing um, to mention before we go into this process is in order to connect your domain to HubSpot, you will need to have access to your DNS and the ability to add records to your DNS, right? To authenticate HubSpot as maybe your email sender, uh, your subdomain provider. What we can do is we can, where it says, let's get started, just simply select connect a domain and you will be prompted with four different options. Now to show you what all of these look like, if we press primary, you have different types of primary addresses you can connect. You can connect, for example, website pages. So whenever you create a website page as an asset in HubSpot, you may want to host that onto a domain. So we may want, for example, content.fulius.com if we wanted a subdomain, or we could have fulius.com as a root domain if we wanted to host the entire website on HubSpot. The important thing to mention is that when you're connecting your different primary types of content, if your website is hosted externally, you always want to host your content in HubSpot on a subdomain, meaning that your website might be built in Wix or WordPress. Basically, the content you publish using landing pages or blogs go on content.blog. So you're not replacing your existing website that's built in a different CMS. So in terms of what you can do, you can do website pages, you can do blog, you can do landing pages, you can do email, and you can do a knowledge base and customer portal. Now to walk you through essentially what each one of those are, you might say that whenever we publish a website page, whenever we publish a blog, whenever we publish a landing page, we always want that to be content.felius.com, right? So we could select these like so, press next, we can put our domain in there like so, press next, make sure it's unique and it's not in use by another portal. So what we're gonna do is test samuelbanks.com. If someone owns this, I will be amazed. So you can see here that we've got now our website pages and we can now specify how we want the structure of the URLs to look, right? So if we know that we on this example, we've got test samuelbanks.com, right? If we know our website is being hosted there with Wix, then we want to create subdomains, right? So we might want to create content, blog, and then here we want offers, right? So what we're deciding here is even though our website may be held in an external CMS, we're not replacing that. We'll put our HubSpot tracking code on it. But then when we're publishing website pages, that will sit on content.yourwebsiteurl. When we publish a blog from HubSpot, it will go on blog.yourwebsiteurl. When we publish a landing page, it will go on offers.yourwebsiteurl. So again, what we're trying to get across here is that you can connect all these different types of assets you may look to publish and specify if you need a subdomain, if it's to replace the root domain, and so on and so forth. Now, if you wanted, for example, your website to be replaced or you didn't have a website that you're looking to host it with HubSpot, you would leave the subdomain blank, right? So that when you go to next, it's basically saying whenever you publish content, it will go onto the root domain. And that's the key thing there, right? So because it's gonna be published onto that domain, it will give you an A record as opposed to a C name. If we go back and we were to put content, blog, and then offers and press next, you will see that now it's changed. So now this content isn't going on our main domain, it's going on a subdomain, right? So essentially that's how it works. You can have a subdomain to host content, which doesn't replace your existing website, or you can put your root domain of the website in if you want HubSpot to be what basically hosts your entire website. From here, all you would do is press next, and then that would give you essentially, um, you know, the records, right? So once we just give this a second to load, it will give you instructions. So essentially you need to log into your domain provider, go to your DNS record settings. And all we need to do is add a new CNAME record with the host set as this and the required pass key or data as the value that HubSpot provides. You can copy that and then just add that 
into your DNS. And then once you've done that, press verify and HubSpot will check if it can detect it in your DNS. If all systems are go, you will get a nice green tick. It usually say it takes a few minutes. It can take up to 60 minutes, but typically it's very quick. And then from there, you will find that when you're creating content, they will can be published onto those domains. Now, if for example, you want to do the HubSpot configuration and you want to just leave your domains in draft, you can do so, right? So you can actually cancel the process and leave them in draft and provide maybe this URL to your web developer who has access to your DNS and then they can actually do the setup for you. So really consider basically ultimately who's gonna be doing this task and ultimately um, who's confident in doing the task as well. Because again, adding C names, adding A records might be something that's better suited to your IT department or something of similar stature. Lastly, to finish up, when you connect your domains, what this essentially allows you to do is if you go to any of the tools, right? So where we have content, blog, offers, we were talking about landing pages, right? Or blog or website pages. So if we go to any of these now, and we was to go into an example landing page. So if we go into our test landing page, under settings, once you have connected your domains, you will be able to switch the domain here, right? So you'll be able to select your nice custom domain that you may have connected um, to publish your uh, landing pages, your website pages, your blog content. Similarly, when you go to actually publish an email and you basically select it, if you verify your email sending domain, you will be able to basically switch who this is coming from, right? So rather than selecting from, um, you know, a person in your account, if you've connected your domains, like so. So we might pick, for example, uh, registrations. We can actually add that in there as well. So again, connecting your domain will allow you to send from a custom branded uh, from address, um, as well as publishing content to subdomains or similar domains as well. And that is essentially it to connect your domains. I think the key point here that we're really trying to get across is make sure that you're going to the domains, make sure that you've really thought through ultimately, you know, what do you need? Is it a primary domain you're connecting? So your main domain you're connecting to your portal. Is it a secondary domain? Is it just a micro site? Do you need any redirected domains? And do you need to set up any email sending domains for SPF records, uh, DKIM? If you do need any support on there, there are HubSpot partners uh, that can support you in this. But ultimately, um, I hope this video helped. And if it did, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for all the latest hub fuels, as well as our video hub, which goes more into product updates and the latest HubSpot how-tos. And as always, love to speak to you again soon. So take care.